Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and on today's video we're going to be talking about how we can deal with logs, right? So logs on Ionix are going to be uh, printing out a lot of content and you don't want to be opening that content on a specific folder or uh, on a specific uh, editor, right? You want to have the logs as, as soon as it, it, it displays, right? And we're going to create a shell script to simulate that log. So this is the first time that we're actually creating a script. And I'm going to show you how you can actually see the logs and how you can also uh, watch a specific command. You can say, I would like this, this command to be executed uh, after a certain amount of time. So if you haven't uh, seen any of my videos yet, I'm going to post the links for those so you can see how we, we, we executed the basic commands and uh, we set up a profile, how we can version that profile, Java API uh, with Fresh Sure as well. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so in order for you to be able to follow up. And uh, let's start. So I have here a repository that doesn't have anything. Uh, if I list, there isn't, there isn't anything. This is a very clean repository, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to create a file and we're going to be able to execute the file. So I can create the file either through IntelliJ or uh, through the command line. Since we are loading the command line, I'm going to use the command line touch. And I'm going to say the name of the file is create log, create log dash sh for shell script right so now i have the file here and the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to just say echo hello world that's it and i'm going to execute that file right the way you execute a file on on shell it's on, on a unix sorry it's dot slash so dot slash is going to send instruction to say I want to execute this file and I'm going to create send the log file right? and it says I don't have permission right? and I think it was two videos ago I described the permission set and we, we went over that this is for folders this is for folders. Let me remove this because this is making it a little hard to read. This is for folders. The first one is to say if it's a folder or a file. Here it are the permissions for the owner of that file, of the file in case me. This is the permission for everyone in the same group. And this is the permission for uh, a public permission. So I have me as an executor. Or as the owner, I have read and write. I don't have execute. Then that's why it's failing. A person on my group has the read, only the read. The person can only read, cannot write, or cannot execute. And the same as in open. This is a, if a person has access to my computer, uh, that person can read that file. So what I need to do, um, I need to make this file with executing permission and also I, I described a command called sh mode and if I do man sh mode is to change file modes or access control and you have a bunch of options right but the only thing that I want to do is I want to add the execute permission which is uh, the letter x for execution right so I can do sh mode and I give what actual what permissions I want that file to have, and I'm going to say plus x. I want to have, I want to add the execution permission to the create log file. Now that I read, so this is how it was, no x. Now it has x. He also changed the color here, so now I know that I can execute those, right? I could remove those dash x and it's removed, right? Minus x to remove and 
plus to add right now I can do dot slash create log and now I have my hello world perfect so now I have an executable file I, the first thing that I'm going to say is I'm going to say in which scripting language I would like these to execute right so I'm going to give a hashtag the hash sign is the command for uh, for comment this is a comment see that the highlight is is not showing anymore because this is a comment so I'm going to give it a comment and I'm going to say exclamation mark and it's already giving me a options here I want to do dash bin dash bash I want the scripting language for this script to be bash awesome so what are we what are we are actually trying to do is I want to have a file that's going to create a log simulation right so you have an application your application is constantly uh, displaying a log you want to read that so the first thing that I'm going to do I'm going to create a simulation of a log file right um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my name I'm going to print my name in how many times my name my name were printed so I'm going to say this is a variable I'm defining a variable here string and I'm going to say that this variable has Raphael and I'm going to give it a space right it's very important that the assignment here the equals have no space between the the variable and the actual value right there are some tricks and and, and some unfortunate stuff dealing with bash right? awesome and i want to print the amount of times that my name were printed so i'm going to give like an index and this is one right so now i can print those so i can say echo string And the way that I act, that I print a variable, or the way that I reference a variable is with the dollar sign string, and I'm going to say dollar sign index. So now I can re-execute this command, and now it's Raphael one. I just need now to loop and add plus one to the index and add that to my string, and that's going to work. So if I give it an extra space here, it's broken, right? IntelliJ is actually helping me out. If I give an extra here also, it's also broken, right? So it needs to have, it needs to be attached, it needs to be glued. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this right here because this is what I want to echo, right? What I need to do is I want I need to increment the index with plus one and print that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a infinite loop. I'm going to pretty much say while true, which is always true. So I'm going to say while true. This is how you do this. And I can even break the line and do do and done. This is how you do the while loop. Or I can say, and let's say echo loop, right? And I'm going to comment this out. So now when I execute, loop, 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 loop. So another way to write this is do uh, semicolons and do in the same line. So now loop, 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 right? So it doesn't really matter the way that you, I, I like to do it like this. I don't like to add an extra line here. I just, this is my preferences, but anyway. So now what I want to do, I want to add a, a increment, right? So what we want to do is basically I want to say index receives 
index plus one. This would be common in any language, right? And now, then I would like to say echo index. But you can see that it is not actually working. It's printing the one plus one plus one plus one plus one. I don't want that. I don't want to do that. I want to actually do a sum because it, this is not doing this sum. This is actually saying one plus one and it's printing one plus one. I want it. I want to force it evaluate this expression and put the value on this variable, right? And the way that we do here is I can just say double parenthesis and it's going now it's going to understand as a mathematical expression that I need to uh, that it needs to evaluate the whole expression. So now that I execute you can say that it's executing the, the sum. Alright so now what I want to do is I want to put my name so I'm going to just put the same that we we put here. I'm just going to put this up. I'm going to delete it here. And when I execute, I have exactly what I wanted. Right? Great. Awesome. So this is one thing, right? I'm going to add a slip here because this was too fast. Right? So I'm going to add the slip and the slip is just going to add a second slip. I, I, I slip, I time, time out of a second and I can give as many seconds as I would, I would like to. I'm going to give two. This is going to be two seconds. Okay. Raphael 1, Raphael 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is waiting two seconds, right? This is awesome, right? This is great. So what I'm going to do is now that this has a slip, I'm going to say I'm going to rename this file and I'm going to say create log rename 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 refactor rename create log with a slip. Awesome, just to make it clear. Right. But I don't want this to be printed in a external file, uh, in my terminal. I want this to be printed in an external file. Right. So we also learned that we can use a redirection of whatever was uh, printed in the terminal. That's the std alt, right? And I can say double uh, greater than this is going to append to a file, right? If I don't put double, the, if I don't put double, this is not going to append. This is if I only put one, this is going to override. So it's not going to be adding at the file. It's going to be overriding that, and I don't want to override. So and I'm going to give a directory, right? And I'm going to give a temporary folder, a slash, create log with sleep text. The temp folder, every Unix has this TMP folder, which is a temporary folder, which any application can use, use that as a temporary hold of files, right? It's temporary because it's going to be deleted by the operation system on every boot and on every restart, right? So it's going to be deleted constantly. So do not hold, do not put any significant, any important file in the temp folder. And this is why I'm putting there. Because if I forget to delete, it's going to be deleted anyway. So now what we are doing is we are exporting that content to that file. So now we have a file that I can watch it. I can look at it. Right, so now... I'm going to execute this. I'm going to open a different tab, which is a different terminal on my computer. So I have now two tabs. I have now two tabs here. I don't even need two tabs, but anyway, 
I'm going to execute the create log. This is returning the name, right? So it's create create log with slip. And this is running, right? You can see that this is running. I'm opening a new terminal. I'm going to go to my temp folder. And you can see that there is a file here called create log with slip. I can cat that file. And it's it, it printed nine times. Now eleven times. Twelve times. I, but I don't want to be executing that same cat command over and over and over and over again. So there's a command called watch, which is going to be watching a specific command. So if I do man watch, they execute a program per periodically, showing the output full screen. So and by default, it's going to execute that command uh, every two seconds. So I can say watch cat create log. So you just send watch, and the second parameter is everything. It's, it's the command that you want to be watched. And you can see that every two seconds, it's executing this command, right? And you can see that 56, 58, 60, 2, 4, and so on and sprinting it's it's every time every two seconds is executing that same command so that's one way you can if you have if you have a need to execute uh, a command multiple times to get a status to get something in your terminal then you can open a terminal do a watch and that's going to be watching that command until you quit that command and which is control c and you con you delete that Right, so also I'm going to stop this because this is still executing. I'm going to delete these two. Uh, in this case, it was a stop. And now I'm going to create a new script. Right, and the script that I'm going to create is exactly the same, but without the slip. So it's going to be that whole thing that we created, like a bunch of stuff, and it's going to be created on the log. without slip, right? And now I'm going to show you how you can actually follow through. So I'm going to exit. So now I have another file and I'm going to, this is create log. It's now executing. I'm going to come here. If I do cat create log, it's going to 65 times. And now I'm going to do it again. How many times it was after that? And again, but I don't want to be typing that. I also don't want to open that on a on a on a editor because this is not going to be falling through. So there is a command called tail, which I pass tail dash f, and is going to so say man tail. This display the last part of a file, and the dash f is cause the tail not to stop when the end of the file is reached. So if the log stopped to be to be printed for some reason, I don't want the tail command to stop. I want the tail command to keep watching for that file. So now if I do tail f create log dark text file, it's going to be printing and it's always displaying the end of the file. You can see that's always displaying the end of the file. I don't want to uh, I don't want to see the whole file. I just want to see what is printing in that log and I can just have this on my terminal always running if I stop here it stopped but since I executed with dash f the command was not actually stopped if I retry this you can see that restarted so I didn't do anything it's already followed through right so uh, because this is the dash f it's always going to be here listening if something stopped it's going to still be listening when that that something resumed is going to be reading that uh, log again so that's how you can and i'm going to need to stop the command here and i'm going to delete the file you can see that the file was pretty big already seven meg because we were creating a a infinite loop file right so we need to remember to uh stop that process so i'm going to be pushing this file to this uh, repository so you can take a look of how we created that script 
if you like, please please give the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, because next video is going to be still talking about Unix, how we can use VI. I'm going to give some tips of how we can use VI, which is the built-in editor for Unix. Uh, you don't have to know how to use it to code. I know that some people that uses that uses VI to code, but you don't need to, but you need to be able to uh, at least edit, do some simple additions, uh, make, uh, change a file, edit a line, add a line, delete a line, do some basic editing on, on using VI. That's very good. It's going to be very handy for you, right? So thank you for watching and I see you next video.